Hello everybody and welcome back. We are inside the Electrodynamic Synobium, which is also another name for the monastery, which is where we needed to head for a couple of our quests. We ran into some difficulties last episode. We were attacked by, I'm going to guess, some guards of some sort. Uh, they ambushed us. So I stopped the recording here because uh, we headed in the opposite direction and I just have a feeling that we're in for another fight. Uh, let's look around this room to see if there's anything interesting and there is. Okay, it's all like treasures. Here's something else. Let's see what we're up against here. There's something here. Oh gosh, it's electric. And I'm gonna guess that getting in that is a bad idea. There's another one there. There's an enemy right there. Okay, uh... Let me get Argenta. Can I get her to come here? Can she fire on this dude? She can. So let's do that. All right, now we can get them into position. I'm not going through that electric. So what we're going to do is stay back here for now. There are some bad guys right here. Might be able to get them from this position. Adira. Okay, Abelard, why don't you stay there? Argenta, why don't you come over here. Let's see what happens. Death to the weak! Crush the feeble! Oh. I serve the ruinous powers! Did that guy just die? I think he did. That is pretty dangerous, so we do not want to cross those streams. Alrighty, Dira. Let's see if we can... Okay, we can't. We're not in sight of anybody. So we're hidden pretty well. Chaos guides me! We're just gonna have patience. Anya? Come on, you dummies. Come through the white light. You know you want to. Okay, Argento. Okay. For now, I think I'm going to stay right where she's at. Fire. All right, Pascal. Let's just see. Ah, can't get anybody. Oh. Alright, 
Millard. Come up here. Got him. Good job. Uh, I can't run all the way through. I don't want to get stuck with that electrical stuff. Death to non-believers! Did he die? He did. We're gonna have to come up and around because there's no way they can fire on that side. It's just not gonna happen. And if anybody makes it through, so we're just gonna leave it to Abelard and Chaos guides me! Come on. Your end is near! Ouch. Pascal, we're just going to have to make our way, aren't we? Not much else we can do. Abelard. Heal. I'm going to have Adira put extra dodge on you. Deary, we need to put Dodge on Abelard. Come here. Okay. Okay, Anya, you still can't shoot him. Just chill. Okay, he's down. Now she can run over here. So we're gonna do that. Okay. Now who's left? Got a few people down here. Okay. So let's run and gun. Up to here. Okay, we only got eighteen. Try it. <coughs> Got him. Okay, we can't do anything with that. All right, Pascal. All right, these two should be able to finish everything off. I'm hoping. Can't move there. Nice. Okay. 
Okay. Alright, Adira's got momentum. Not that that's going to help her much right now. But we're going to get her up here. Okay, Anya, you're really not going to be much help, dear. You just observe from there. If we can run across, we will, but... That electrical stuff is nasty. All right, Argenta, come up here. You're not going to be able to do anything either. Oh, this is electrical too, isn't it? Yikes. I forgot. Oh no. Oh dear. Uh. <laughs> Can I fire on that? No. Okay, there's one dude left. We're always oh, right there. Alright, I can't do anything with that. Oh, Oh, she missed. Oh, I just hope... No, we're staying there. I just hope Abelard can... What can he do? Ah! He hurt himself. Okay. You're gonna have to heal. You have no more healing left. You're gonna have to stay there. It's all gonna be Argenta. She's gotta get rid of that dude. Okay, Anya, I mean... I don't want you in the electrical, so... You just stay put. All right, Argenta. But I don't know if the electrical is... Nope, it doesn't stay off. Uh, I think we'll have one person run around and get all the loot. And... Uh, so I don't know if there's any traps or anything. Back 
here. You can kind of see where the electrical hits. See what's going on here. Awareness. Occultist gunner. Um. Okay, that's kind of interesting there. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to wait for that to go off again. And as soon as it's done, we're going to bring everybody over here. Okay, come on, everybody. Run, 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 run. Okay. I'm going to save. The reason I'm saving is because this wasn't just a loot. This was an awareness check. Um... So I'm just thinking maybe something's going to happen. Okay, let's have Pascal open this. Oh, good. There's another med kit. We're going to give that to Abelard. He's out of them now. Let's go ahead and... Uh, see what this is. These dead heretics are suspiciously different from the others. The symbols on their clothes are drawn wrongly, and standard issue military uniforms show through the blasphemous tatters. Huh. quite sure what that means, but well, let's continue. Okay, there's a cultist fighter, but doesn't look aggro. That's very suspicious. Something's going on. Well, shall we find out? <laughs> A crowd of cultists has surrounded a tech priest crucified upon a mechanism. A rhythmic whisper repeated by a hundred voices blends into some blasphemous enchantment. Powerful discharges of the motive force run through the machine, causing the unfortunate prisoner's body to convulse brutally and forcing woeful cries of pain from his lips. Oh. The tech priest's hoarse voice echoes under the ceiling. In the clenched claws of stagnation, in the shackles of iteration zero, under the iron wing, let the cycle be discontinued. Pascal's mechandrites spring into combat mode instantly, and a wrathful rattle comes from his box. I am registering a severe violation of the purity protocol. The blessed Amornat has been captured by heretics and is being tortured. Look around the hall. <coughs> heretics have taken up positions everywhere, and many more are doubtlessly hiding in the passages leading out of the hall. For now, they are all focused on the sacrilegious torture of the tech priest and do not notice you. We must save him without risking his life. 
we can use the blasphemer's clothing as a disguise. Unrecognized, we can sabotage the power units, overloading them and thus cleansing the Hall of Heretics. Sweet, so we're going to steal some clothes off the corpses. I like that idea. The lightning discharges have charred the cultist's corpse. Whiffs of smoke rise from their empty eye sockets, whose contents have evaporated. Their clothes, covered in the blood of innocence, are crudely painted over with emblems of the arch-enemy, which exude a repulsive air of soul decay. I shudder with disgust at the mere thought of having to touch clothing adorned with unholy symbols, let alone wear it. This is the first step toward falling, a small compromise with evil that will lead to something greater. Is there truly no other way, rogue trader? If it helps to save a worthy man, I will put on the cultist's robe. I pray that the Omnissaya gives the blessed Amanat enough fortitude. Got more iconoclast points. Here we go. Five minutes have passed. Oh! Don't we look spiffy? The heretic's garb clings to your skin like a greedy leech. Tingling and foul fever spread over your body, as though these tatters have imbibed the vile contents of their former wearer's soul. Okay. We have to commit sabotage. Order the distribution servitor to raise the output to peak values. Utter the litany of accusation from the command throne. Destroy the safety system control altar. Wow, there's quite a lot we have to do. Let's, uh, I'm not. I'm not really sure. I'm gonna save. Uh, we have to get to the throne, but not quite yet. There's another one of those machines there. All right, let's come around here. Uh-oh. A heavy crown of golden neural augmetics rests upon the servitor's head. The crown is bent and broken from ruthless gunbutt blows. The pale body is covered in blasphemous inscriptions carved into the withered flesh. I identify this acolyte as a distribution servitor. I am registering upon it traces of sacrilegious violation of the right of operation. The probability of its responsiveness to commands is below average. Let's try to conduct a restart ceremony. Pascal's test succeeded. For the glory of the Omnissaya, let this machine spirit sleep, that it may awaken and serve again. Pascal gently touches the servitor's crown, deactivating one of its segments. Let the outer neural connection circuit be plunged in darkness. Another touch, and several lights on the crown go out. Let the command response hub fall silent. Pascal switches to Biharic speech, accompanying his every action with a line from a sacred hymn. It is amazing how the reverent awe in the tech priest's voice can be discerned even through his rattling box. Suddenly, every light on the servitor's crown comes alive. A 
shower of sparks burst from the augmetics on the servitor's brow, and several black ash-tinted tears run from its empty eye sockets. Ready to serve. Pascal replies, Energize the hall's power units to the maximum. It will be done. Let's come over here. See if there's something. Yes. Safety system control altar. The altar's adorned with gilded skulls. Threads of metal that used to be electus are fused into the bone. Once majestic, the altar has now been desecrated with blasphemous images of blue-green suns. Some of its levers and buttons have been pried from their sockets, but the mechanism still glorifies the Omnisaya with its operation. Pascal I identify this as the safety system control altar. For our diversion to succeed, this blessed machine must be executed, and may its spirit forgive us. We can cause it to all overload. I think we'll do that. Brute force will cause attention. Let's try that. Succeeded. Pascal offers a short Benharic prayer, then enters command after command to set up a trap for the machine spirit inhabiting the altar. The code, born out of the tech priest's tinkering, causes the spirit to flutter confusedly in a snare of impossible commands. Heat up the altar circuit boards and perish forever in the showers of sparks. Oh, that's sad. May we be granted the Omnisaya's forgiveness for this act. I am registering a general shutdown of the security system. Alright, so we did that. I think we have to do something on the throne. Let's check the journal. Okay, we destroyed the system altar. We have to utter the litany from the command throne. Okay, that's what we have to do. A grim-looking heretic walks up to you resolutely, blocking your path. As he studies your disguise with suspicion, you note that his left eye has two conjoined irises, while his right eye has four. I don't know you. Who are you? Why haven't I met you before? Hmm... Let's see. Well, I'm not going to tell him who I am. <laughs> we could bash him, but then again, we could be in combat. I could try this. <coughs> uh, uh, perhaps the master has blinded your eyes to trifles. I'm going to smile mysteriously. You are my next offering. Oh! It was a lore warp test. We succeeded. Your reply, imbued with mystical significance, was evidently to the cultist's liking. He smiles haughtily and says, May our master blind you too, sister. <laughs> Let's try this again. A tech priest's corpse, his throat slit, sits upon a splendid command throne, laced with finely wrought motive force paths. 
A contorted expression of righteous anger is frozen on his face. A black blindfold covers his eyes. This is the Luminodeacon's command throne. This is where the power unit actuation and shutdown litanies are recited. The blessed Luminodeacon himself has the honor of closing the circuit of the motive force. Uh, Pascal, would you kindly sit down on the throne and recite the litany? Pascal freezes, and a quiet whisper comes from his vox. Request denied. I am not authorized. Such an act would be considered sacrilege. Pascal, saving the relic and your mentor justifies a minor infraction of the rules, wouldn't you say? I persuaded him. Pascal casts a scrutinizing glance at you and then nods reluctantly. Situation deemed an emergency. I request the Omnissiah's forgiveness for the transgression about to be committed. The tech priest's body winces from the motive force discharge, but his vox begins to recite the sacred words of the litany as his fingers activate the command runes with precise, unhurried movements. I am recording a successful activation of the power units. In the cycles of the foreordained, there lurks a flaw of worship. The tech priest's body convulses. Pained, plaintive creaks and benharic prayers come from his fox. As moments pass, the signal becomes less and less clear, as if something twisted and wrong were being added to it. Pascal studies the tech priest's face carefully. His Vox system moans in a tragic vibrato. Subject unidentified. This is not the blessed Amarnat. Stranger, I request your name. How do you know my mentor's motto? Who are you, servant of the Omnissiah? The fire of the hearth sent forth sparks. The name of this spark is Abel Hanuman. The tech priest looks over at Pascal. For a moment, his speech becomes clear. The echo of my call has reached you. Good. The iteration is at its end. The design is fulfilled. What design? Why are you calling yourself by my name? Was it you who summoned me to Rykat Minoris? What for? I categorically demand an answer. An intention both bold and honorable. To open new gates for the waters of knowledge and comprehension. A plan written so that the righteous may follow. Pascal replies, and trust in the great pattern of revelation and uniform progression towards it. Pascal's voice is trembling. With elation? Those are... His words, I have not heard them in so very long. Ask him about Amarnat. You came here because of him, after all. No. 
He came because of himself. Myself? To redeem myself? To correct a mistake, possibly, but how do you... There is a gentle condensation in Abel's eyes. Strange, given the circumstances. The hubris of the mind spurs him to build monuments to himself. Do not regret, for all is predetermined by the iteration. A devastating coughing fit cuts him off, and you hear a clang of tearing metal from inside his chest. You can talk to him once we get him out of here. A cold premonition rakes the heart. The probabilities are dark and frightening. Brother, I do not wish to gaze into them. Pascal, we are the flame of knowledge that drives the darkness away. Do not fear what is to come, brother. We are already here. Let's try to take him down. As soon as you touch the tech priest's battered flesh, he shifts his gaze to you and says with sudden clarity, Many sparks have gone out, but not all. The electric shepherds are alive. In the darkness I heard their prayers. Find them. Save them. Recite the hymn of contact circuit restoration so that you may behold what is hidden. We have to find the surviving priests. A blast of the motive force runs down the tech priest's body and his face contorts in a mocking grimace. Malformed Beinharic code, repulsively jarring on the ears, pours out of his box. Pascal, Information archived to the effect that the circuit restoration hymn is the entrance password to the Electro Priest's hiding place. That's who we fought earlier. I note with great sorrow that the cultist ritual has been partially successful. My tech brother has been tainted. He's in the grip of a schismatical an unholy imitation of a machine spirit. I request immediate activation of the tech source and protocol. We need to help save him. Every now and then, a word or two of Gothic finds its way into the Benharic obscenities pouring out of his vox in what seems to be schismatical's tentative forays into a language that is alien to it. <sighs> His body convulses, his joints twist in unnatural angles as the possessed man thrashes about. His internal augments emerge through the hanging tatters of his flesh. Oh, it's like he's changing into something. Pascal's mechandrite extends a thin drilling needle. Sacred ungent glistens on it. A code purification is heard as the needle sinks into the possessed tech priest's skull. Extreme strain is visible on his face. Result, failure, requesting assistance. You can recite a prayer to the emperor, and grant the emperor's peace, or send a charge into the possessed man's body. May the machine's god heal you. You grab one of the severed cables and press it into the tech priest's body, and a shock of power shakes the possessed man. Machine oil gushes out of his mouth. The overload destroys some of the circuit boards, resets his code, and erases the schismatical from existence. The tech priest's eyes roll up. He loses consciousness, still alive and no longer in the thrall of corruption. Pascal takes his body down from the mechanism and lays it on the floor. His stirring litanies of gratitude to the Omnissiah echo 
through the hall. Rest, Tech Brother. We will come back for you when we have done our duty to the miraculous fusion reactor. Lord Captain, the Omnissiah commands a pious mind to strive toward uncovering the truth. Therefore, I will not stop until I find my mentor and understand this connection to this servant of the machine god. I request the privilege of joining your retina as a rightful companion. I can offer to fulfill the duties of an engine seer in exchange for the right to follow you. Well, I would be honored. All right, everybody. Well, we're going to leave the episode here. Thank you for joining me today. Please give a like and subscribe. Hope to see you next time. Bye-bye now.